Hello there YouTube. Well, this is going to be part one of however many parts. If you saw my D-Day EVIC video, it's up there. So, of course I can't just leave them the way they are because that wouldn't be any fun nor would it be very exciting. So, well, I've already come up with a plan and I have references ready to go. So this is uh, Major Dick Winters 1911 from Band of Brothers, the real guy, not the movie. And uh, so I think that is going to become this, probably at a later date. But first I'm going to focus on this guy here. So again, Evic Mystery Box. This is uh, courtesy of our friends over at CN Arsenal. So they put these high quality pictures online of their pretty well worn PPS H41. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as a reference. Uh, some things I've noticed on here that I'm going to try to duplicate, don't hold me to it, is this dark place, you know, kind of dirty hand print. I'm going to definitely try to replicate that. Uh, you can see it here. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Usually that wears away the, the finish where the person's hand has been, but you can tell this person's hand was dirty, real dirty. So I'm going to try to add that back on there. And then this kind of weird reverse lightning bolt is cool. I like the way that that is. And so if this stock isn't grain the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and grain it myself. I'm just using some paint for my airbrush. Uh, this is pretty well worn. So uh, I noticed that some of the people on my previous weathered video didn't like how far I went. But this is kind of what I'm going for. I mean, I could just leave it and it'll, it'll get mildly worn on its own. So I don't... You know, that's not any fun for me. I want to make it look like this, like it's been in the trenches. Now, you can tell that this drum is married to this gun. They're not the same, you know. There's definitely way more bluing on that drum than there is on the gun. So those that's a marriage, which is fine. I might, you know, why not replicate that? Because chances of finding the drum that's worn the same as the gun is zero. But there's some, you know, I've marked with arrows here what I'm going to pay attention to. Like the wear on the sling swivel is unique. Uh, the wear around this um, rear sight is kind of unique. Now I noticed that their gun has got some, um, some issues with fitment for this back piece, which mine doesn't have. I don't think I'm going to add that to it. One of the issues is, I'll take the airsoft out here in a second, is this cocking handle on the airsoft version is kind of a really cheap plasticky looking thing so hopefully it is metal cool they provided this exploded uh, diagram also so I can see the individual parts how they were worn these are from assembly and disassembly these wear marks so I'm not going to worry too much about them just the stuff on the outside so let me break this thing out and we'll take a look at it okay um, kind of cool they got the the diagram in here so you can see the airsoft version has quite a few more parts than the real one uh, like I said this the system here is kind of funky I'm not I'll have to take a better look at it once I get it apart because it doesn't go all the way forward nor does it go all the way back so I have a feeling that there's something bound up in here I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really do anything properly. So hopefully we can figure that out when we got it apart. These markings are going to have to go. That's fine. These stickers are going to have to go. That's fine. Uh, like I said, the graining of the wood. Yeah, it's okay. I noticed that there's no um, serial numbers, you know, where there should be. So I'll probably stamp those on there. I will say from experience, don't try to stamp numbers into the wood because of the way that the uh, battery compartment is on these, you'll end up breaking it. So just don't do it. Now the drum I'm going to go ahead and sand as well because it wouldn't be new, but I'm not going to make it look brand, you know, it's not going to look as worn as the gun, like I said, for the reasons that I explained earlier. So I got a bunch of disassembly to do, so I will go ahead and do that following this diagram and if I run into anything funky so well I guess I can see see how that kind of daylight showing through that's kind of what they're showing on here so maybe it is the same just depends on the angle you're looking at it I guess 
So anyway, before I get too long-winded, let's cut and get this puppy apart. Got my my tools of the trade here. Let's do this. So I did find what was keeping this thing from riding forward. It was this little block here. Uh, it was interfering right here. It's catching the front edge of this thing. So now that it does, it goes all the way forward. So <clears throat> that'll be something I need to fix when I put it back together. Nothing too special there. Uh, much to my surprise, everything that I need to sand is metal, uh, including this back section here, including the sling swivel. I wasn't sure. It was looked kind of plasticky on the gun, but now that I've taken it off, it is metal. Uh, just a couple bags of parts. Nothing too spectacular. Uh, like I said, nothing really that uh, like difficult taking it apart. There's these little Allen heads that maybe was like the trickiest. Getting these off is going to be fun. I do need to remove this because I'm going to have to rework this bolt head. It's not uh, it's not to my liking. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. But if you were just to take it apart, it's fairly easy. Uh, some of the stroop, some of the uh, some of these screws are a little strippy, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so now it's just going to be a whole bunch of sanding. Uh, I don't really want to take this off because I want it to be part of the sanding, but I think I'll probably take that spring out because I don't want to damage it or get it clogged full of a bunch of garbage. Here we go, a bunch of sanding. We'll get that off of there. And we'll make this thing look old. The color of any of this anyway, it looks really cheap not right maybe we'll do some detailing to the uh, extractor there too hey I, like i said i think this is going to be a project for another day i actually have a really cool project coming something way different for me and uh hopefully something cool for you as well uh, sanding last time it took me like five days for that uh the weathered ak hopefully it won't take so long with this i don't think it will there's not a lot of surface area and yeah, I don't have to see I don't have to do any of this. It's just this little piece here and this is fairly straight So that won't take too long and this is going to end up probably getting more repainted than anything Okay, one last look while it's still all black and not scarred. So this is Here's where we take the leap the leap of faith And hope everything turns out. Okay. I'm sure it will they usually do But this is the last time it's going to look like this all right, well, you can see what's going on here. This is what it looked like, and this is what it's become. So I just need to make some file marks that I can't sand through when I go to sand it. I think I'm doing a pretty good job here. It's, uh, like I said, leap of faith. This is when it's really looking not so good. You just kind of have to trust that it's going to turn out in the end. I've got something special cooked up for the barrel. Uh, it might be a little unexpected, so I'll save that for later. Uh, probably going to do another hour's worth of sanding. That was one hour of file work. And now I'm going to do another hour probably on this side. Just to get the file work right. If you don't get it like in the right places and then you go to sand it, it won't look right. I've done this before. Check out the video. Okay, here we are. Um, hour number two. So now I'm going to switch over to sandpaper and this will probably take a couple more hours. But see, I got it pretty good. So here we are, day two, Skip, skipping ahead a little bit. Of course, you know, people were watching TV and banging around and everything. So here we are now, after several hours of sanding and a little bit of overspraying. Here's our bolt now. I put the um, detail in here, the black. Uh, I don't really like this ridge here. It's uh, part of the casting. They, uh, it just has, you know, a, a wide spot. It's just part of the casting process. It has it on both sides. So I'm going to try to uh, alleviate that a little bit more. Uh, but it's starting to look pretty good. Here's kind of my surprise here. Of course, it looks weird because it's all one color. But it's I oxidized, you know, fake oxidized the barrel by mixing a color. I think I got it pretty close. So this will be the base coat. And then I'll put, you know, the, the subsequent dirt and wear over the top of it. But since it would be an oxidation layer, it would happen all over, you know, probably starting from here out but eventually get to the end of the barrel but this will all be blackened so you know I just needed to get a base layer so it's kind of a it's uh, mostly tan with some brown and red some dark red like four drops of dark red because it does need to be pink next 
course I have the stock I haven't even approached that but of course it's gonna take a beating too because it's not gonna match being all new looking but I'm not sure if maybe I'll just paint the beading in so that it's texturally fine you know I'm gonna cheat a little bit here I think just because I, <laughs> I hate to literally just like beat up this brand new stock so if I just make it look old I think I'll get the same effect both of my knock off Iwata airbrushes broke on me so I took them all apart last night and hopefully I can get one or both to work but I'm gonna have to order a new airbrush so that's gonna put kind of a damper on the forward progress alright guys I'm just about to wrap this up there was I'm kinda of skipped ahead a little bit here I, both my airbrushes broke um, I wouldn't recommend anything other than a name brand airbrush because if you buy a generic one they will break so, some of this I did without the use of a paintbrush, and it's kind of obvious some of the spots, but maybe you don't notice, but I do. But it turned out pretty good. I didn't, I just did the paint on the stock. I didn't, you know, damage the stock any. But I think it turned out pretty good. I, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the outcome here. I got some of the speckling on the barrel so that it's not just that uniform color. I'm pretty happy with it. My wife didn't think it looked too good, but this is what it looks like. <laughs> Maybe not from a 7.62x25, but I would imagine if you shot it enough and you got it hot enough, it would. And you got 71 round drum magazines, which I haven't quite got to yet. So I'm going to do like I said, I'm just going to lightly sand it. So I was getting this thing back together, and one of the most pain in the butt parts of this are these little recoil rod assemblies. And there is a little trick to it before you you know smash your face in trying to get this in here so this is the unassembled side what you do is you put the bolt on with it all the way forward with the the key all the way forward uh, you can there's a decocker on here which is the safety when you push pull this all the way back and push it into this key it uh, unlocks it unlocks the cylinder so that's kind of a neat little feature. So anyway, <clears throat> getting these little bugging springs back in here is kind of a pain in the butt. But here's how you do it. You put the key all the way forward. You take your spring, you put it in into the slot. Make sure it lines up pretty well. It's a little bit, sh you know, the, the hole is shorter than the spring. So you kind of have to hold it in here like this. And then you take your rod and you thread it from the back. Of course, I got burrs on this rod because I'm trying to take off of the trying to take off the the little C clips that are on it is kind of a pain in the butt as well. But that you just kind of have to struggle through. There's not really any trick for that. So then you just hold everything in place, and if everything goes right, you'll see you'll see the end of the rod focus. Hopefully, it hasn't been unfocused this whole time. So it focuses as soon as I turn it off. Anyway, so down in this slot you can see the rod passing through. And so as long as you got that rod passing through, you should be good to go. Um, like I said, this one's a little stuck. So you can push it back and you can see that it needs to go a little bit further in. There it goes. And that's it. So nothing, you know, not extreme, but if you try to fight it and make it not the, you know, not go in the way that it wants to go in, it will definitely be a struggle. So that's it. Now I just got to put the little clips on. Continue to reassemble it and we'll see how it goes. Okay, happily I get to wrap this up. So this was my, my study model. Of course I started with an S&T PPSH41. And here it is. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, like I said, my airbrush broke. So I wasn't, I sanded and filed the magazine as much as I wanted to. Because I kind of want to make it look like this one where it's married. So I just kind of uh, just temporary it until I get a new airbrush. <clears throat> but it's all pretty much exactly how I foresaw it. Like I said, I did the kind of oxidized overshot barrel. Some, And it's a living finish as well. I'm not going to clear coat it. So the steel will rust and get dark and um, these file things will slowly you know get darkened over time uh, the bolt will not though that's why i kind of made sure that it was the way i wanted to because it's some kind of zinc cut you know same with this it's some kind of zinc 
so you can see it's kind of shiny but that shine will go away so overall I'm really happy with it and uh, you know like I said I need to get it off my workbench because I have another project that I had show up and I'll show you that as a teaser for the next video so hold on while I put this in its box and get the other one out so it's something that I would never buy usually except for I, I've been wanting to get a gas blowback rifle for a while and this is pretty much the only way I can afford it so yes I know but I'll make it my own you know I will but it comes literally as a bag of parts I did pick up a magazine but it's parts lots of parts so that'll be the next project the gas blowback rifle something I haven't done and it's a do-it-yourself so I'll get to learn all about it of the PPSH here in a second except for I don't have a charged battery that fits it so I'm gonna have to work on that for a little bit so stay tuned and hopefully that will be the big payoff so this will be the next video and this is the end of this video so after this probably not too much talking maybe some laughing giggling because it's pretty fun to shoot but for now thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one